Okay, everyone, that's enough chitter chatter. Class has begun. All right, everyone, pop quiz. I know, I know. All right, Jackson. Yes, ma'am. What do we call a person who has a child and tries to take other people's stuff? I, um, maybe, uh, um. Uh. Oh, you don't know the answer, Jackson? You don't know? Is that because your mother happens to be one of these people? Um. Is that because I met her in the supermarket the other day, Jackson? I don't know. Maybe. And when I grabbed the last box of Cheerios off the shelf, what did your mother do, Jackson? I don't know. That's right. I don't know. She took it from my hands. And she said I could have cornflakes. I'm sorry. Class, what do we call that person? That's right. This woman is just trying to work hard and make it through university, but her college roommate and his entitled dad are making it very difficult. It'll annoy you when you hear the ridiculous expectations they have just because she's a woman. A generous man decides to stop to help a mother and her son stranded on the side of the road but he quickly regrets his decision. What does he have to do to escape their entitlement? And our fan submitted story. A movie theater, a sold out showing, an angry entitled mother, and a guy who just wants to watch the movie. What could possibly go wrong for him? You'll only find out by watching this episode of Voicey Hears Entitled Parents. This story was called Entitled Sexist Father Expects Me to Be My Roommate's Maid. So I'm in college, and I live in an apartment with three frat bros. My best friend used to live with us, but graduated last year. She was replaced by our new roommate, the frattiest, most entitled jerk to ever exist. We needed a fourth, and he's my other roommate's frat, so I said, sure. Now, I'm a pretty independent girl. I've had my share of issues, depression, OCD, but I work out a ton. I keep my crap together cook, clean, and I'm generally a pretty good roommate. I stress bake so whenever we have exams and stuff, cookies and brownies and cakes for all my friends, including roommates, and never a pan of mine gets left in the sink. You get the gist. Basically, I'm amazing and he's the worst. Anyway, I had a concussion right at the beginning of the semester when he first started living with us. Super bad headache, nausea, and most importantly, memory loss like extreme memory troubles. I was just living moment to moment and not forming anything new as a long lasting memory. Again, I'm high functioning. I'd set alarms for myself to do things, write everything down as it happened, and took pictures of everything. But I started noticing that I was leaving dishes in the sink, not flushing the toilet. I even found vomit splattered around the toilet one day. I was writing down that I'd found them, but I had no record of how the mess got there. I cleaned them up as soon as I noticed them, but I was super worried about it. About a month passed and I was basically completely normal post-concussive wise, but I kept finding mess everywhere. I brought it up with my doctor because I was so confused. I wipe every surface after baking, but was finding crumbs everywhere. I wash every dish after eating, but was finding dishes in my bedroom. I was constantly keeping my fridge space stocked every weekend and cooking my meals ahead of time and my food would just go missing. I weigh about 100 pounds soaking wet. I couldn't possibly have been eating all of this or cooking this much. I was concerned because obviously I was having these gaps in my memory that this was happening. Then, because I didn't have to sleep as much, I was up later and noticed my new roommate open my cabinet to eat my snacks, like nothing was wrong, and leave an apple core, one of my apples, on the table, and then open my door and put his dish on the floor of my bedroom. I just casually said like, hey roommate, what you doing? He replies, I gotta work on an essay. Okay, so no acknowledgement, interesting. I pick up the core check the cabinets. Most of my snacks have been moved to his, but the empty packages have been moved back into mine. I have no memory of eating them. I ask my roommates if that was weird. Obviously boys are oblivious and notice nothing. This goes on for about a week. That weekend is the start of our fall break. I decide I might just ask his parents about it. 
So when roommate's mum is cleaning his room and roommate is yelling at her about his grades, I decide I'll have a little chat with our titular entitled father. Hey, um, so does roommate ever have problems picking up for himself or anything like that at home? No, I don't see why he would. That's his mother's job. He needs to focus on his studies. Oh, um, well I've been noticing that he's been taking my food and leaving his dishes in my room and things like that. I mean, is that something that happens at home? Why shouldn't he? He doesn't need to waste his time with shopping and cleaning. You should be grateful that you've got a purpose now. Being your son's maid is not my purpose. I have my own studies to deal with. I pay my expenses myself and I can't afford nor do I want to feed your son. Honestly, I don't know why this is such a problem now. Why haven't you brought this up sooner if it's such a problem? I had a concussion and a ton of memory problems. I just assumed that the mess was mine and I, as a responsible adult, clean up after myself. At this point, roommate and very defeated looking mother comes up out of the room. Roommate asks, What's up? Look, your loser roommate wants to be all uppity. You were fine cleaning up after him before. Just keep doing what you're doing. What's the problem? The problem is you've been leaving dirty crap in my room, stealing my food, leaving messes everywhere, and expecting them to get cleaned. Oh, I thought you were okay with it. You kept cleaning up after me, washing my dishes, and you always cook for other two roommates, referring to my baking. I thought you just liked being all domestic and were preparing for the future like the whole Mrs. Degree shtick. No, just no. That is some bullcrap. You can do your own chores and stop exploiting injured women and your poor mother. Entitled father holds my arm and takes me aside. Look, he doesn't know how to do any of that stuff. Couldn't I just pay you for the food and the cleanup after him? $150 a week to cook, clean, and do his laundry. All that. He really needs to focus on his studies. I'll even pay for the time since. That's super crappy parenting, you know. I was trying to be nice to you. You don't need to tell me how to parent, etc. I don't remember the details too well because this was several months ago. Anyway, now my roommate has a hired maid from a company, wash his clothes, and cook his meals for the week, and clean up the apartment. She has a key and everything. Considering the entitled father was willing to back pay all of the time that she's already spent cleaning up after him, I feel like she could have played it a little cool, you know? Just been like, yeah, sure, I'll take the job, receive the back pay, and then, you know, mysteriously, she doesn't want the job anymore. At least then, she would have been compensated for all the food that that guy stole and all the time she spent cleaning up after him. Parents who raise their kids like this are doing them no favors. If he can't even take care of himself, I doubt that he's putting in any effort in his actual studies. In fact, he was complaining to his mum about his grades, so that doesn't really surprise me. I don't think everybody should just jump straight into college and start studying. Sometimes you need a bit of real world experience, learn how to take care of yourself, and trust me, you'll do a lot better in your studies. This story was called The Worst Human I've Ever Met. So this happened yesterday. I'm not working at the moment, but I've been trying to keep myself busy by offering to help people in my family and friends circles, giving them lifts, helping them move, etc. All in all, I consider myself a pretty generous person. Yesterday, my younger brother finally managed to get a few days off work and he was going up the coast with some friends for a nice relaxing getaway for one of their birthdays. He asked me weeks before if I could give him a lift as he had chef school that day and wouldn't be able to get a lift to the house with his friends as planned. I said, sure, no problems. The day comes around. I pick him up early as he finished quick and we get on our way. The drive wasn't bad, took about one and a half hours and we just chatted and listened to music all the way there. It was a nice drive. At this point, it was around 4.30 p.m. By the time I dropped him off and turned around to go home, I got probably halfway home and I see someone parked up by the side of the road, waving me down. So I decided to pull over as a few cars ahead had already driven past without stopping. They dodged a bullet. Enter entitled parent and her piece of crap kid. Can I help you? I was looking confused since she waved me down. 
Uh, I thought maybe you needed some help. Is everything okay? Um, no. We ran out of petrol. Oh, okay. That's a pretty easy fix. The next town I knew had a service station as I passed it on the way there, and it was only another 5 kilometers up the road. I can drive you into the town to get petrol and bring you back here. Okay, she says simply, her son picking up some of the gravel by the roadside and throwing it into traffic. This is a 60 mile per hour highway. Hey, don't do that champ, it's dangerous. She had gone to her car to grab her purse, but reeled out of it as I say this. Don't speak to my son like that, she snapped angrily. Sorry. I get into my car, followed quickly by the obnoxious pair, highly regretting my life choices by this point. Now feeling I can't redouble on myself, given how difficult she had been at me helping her. She sits down and immediately scoffs, looking at her feet. Why is your car so dirty? Oh, uh, sorry. I used to put my work boots down there, so it got kinda dirty over time. You could clean it up, you know. I laugh nervously and just nod, pulling away and wanting this to be over with as fast as possible. I left my phone in the center console and she grabs it up. Can I call someone? My phone ran out of charge. That's why we're stuck out here. Oh yeah, go ahead. I have unlimited calls so I didn't really care. Either she thinks the person on the other line can't hear her, or she's trying to contact them without the use of the phone, because she is shouting. Meanwhile, her son suddenly leaps up between the two front seats, looking out the front window. I quickly slow down a bit in shock. Whoa, put your seatbelt on, dude. The mother just glances at him and pushes him into the back seat, and I have to tell him to put his seatbelt on again before he actually does. I'm freaking seething at this point, but I could already see the town ahead, and she'd thankfully only had a short conversation and put my phone back. We pull up to the pump without issue, but she sits there for like 10 seconds, giving me this quick sideways glance with her arms folded. And I don't even have to ask if she wants me to get the gas for her. I know she does. And then I think, I didn't know if it was going to work, but I wanted to try. And here I am. I get out of the car and grab a 5 litre jerry can they had for sale, holding it up for her approval, and she nods. I fill it up and walk up to the passenger side door and open it. What? Oh, I just wanted to know if your son wanted to pick out an ice cream. I know it's a hot day today. She looked shocked for a moment, and for the first time smiled. The kid practically leapt out of the car, and much to my happiness, so did she, and followed him in there. I walk in put the jerry can onto the counter as he quickly comes up with his ice cream. Oh, one second, I left my phone in the car. It has my debit card in it. I smile as soon as my back is turned to them, getting into the car and casually driving off, relishing in the sight of her running out of the service station, screaming who knows what profanities. All in all, it only ended up costing me about 20 minutes of my time but the feeling I got as I drove away was priceless. I wonder how long it took them to get back to their car. I got home fine, and a solid gold story in tow to tell my family. Best drive ever. I only hope the poor guy running the servo didn't cop it too bad from that crap storm of a human. You gotta love when an entitled parent story is mixed with pro revenge. It just has something very satisfying about it. I don't understand parents who, when their child is being bratty and another person calls them out on it, they defend their child's bad behaviour. I know that's not most parents, but it's definitely more common than it should be. I think generally speaking, people should be free to do whatever it is they want, you should just leave them alone. But when the kid was throwing gravel and damaging other cars on the road, yeah, I think it was fair enough for the guy to call the kid out on it. I don't understand the attitude of like, well you can't tell me what to do when they're causing harm to someone else or their property. This fan submitted story was called Entitled Mother Tries to Take My Movie Tickets, Allows Her Children to Pickpocket Me, and The Cashier Vouches for Her. I'm a big fan of the How to Train Your Dragon franchise, and when I heard there was a third movie coming out, I was excited to say the least. I had asked my friends if they were interested in seeing the movie with me, and two of them said they'd like to go. Awesome. Now the movie is really popular, even on a Monday. I reserved three seats in advance, and we agreed to go see the movie when school ended at 12.50pm. 
The theatre was pretty close to my school, and the movie started at 1.30pm, but there was a catch. If you reserved seats, you need to buy them at least 30 minutes before the movie started. Now since none of us wanted to pay for the overpriced movie snacks, me and my friends made a deal. They'd go and buy the snacks and sneak them in, while I went to buy the tickets. I didn't have any deep pockets like they did, so it was fair. So I bought the tickets and stood in the lobby until my friends arrived. Here comes the entitled mother and her two demon spawn. A few minutes before the movie started, she goes to the desk and talks to the cashier about something. But due to the loudness of the crowded theatre lobby, I had no clue what was going on. All I could tell was that the entitled mum was angry. She turned around and we made eye contact with each other. Do you know how when the teacher asks you a question that you should never look him in the eye? Yeah, it was that exact same thing with this lady. She strolled on towards me, dragging her children with her. And she looked at the three tickets sitting in my hand. And without even flinching, she just said, Give them to me. Excuse me? You heard me. Give those tickets to me. Now, you're clearly too old to be watching these kinds of movies anyway. Don't you have anything better to do? At that moment, I instantly knew I was dealing with a tier 5 entitled parent. I'm not giving you my tickets. I have friends that also want to watch this movie. How am I going to explain to them that I don't have their tickets? That's none of my concern. I just want them. My children are angels, and they deserve to see this movie. Now give them to me. If your kids were such angels, you'd have reserved some seats for them in advance. It's not my problem that you can't plan ahead. Her jaw dropped, like I was being the rude one in the scenario. At this point, the doors to the screening had opened, and people started going in. I wanted to go in too, but the mother blocked my path. You're not going anywhere till I get those tickets. Everyone had already long gone into the screening room. The only people that remained were me, the entitled mum, and the cashier, and a janitor sweeping up the popcorn on the floor. Aren't you guys going to go in? No, because he stole our tickets. Of course, the classic entitled parent, he stole them move. The cashier looked at me. No, these are mine. I paid for them. I don't remember seeing you pay for them. Also, why do you need three tickets? Because he stole them from us. They're our tickets. Look, I can prove that I reserved these tickets. I still have the reservation info on my phone. I start to feel around my pockets to find my phone, but it's nowhere to be seen. I could have sworn they were in my pockets just a few minutes ago. I looked over at the kids. One of them was holding my phone. I instantly go to grab it from him, but the mother slaps my hand away. Don't you dare touch my child. He stole my phone while I wasn't looking. She cut me off. How can you accuse my angelic children of thievery? They'd never do something like that. It's my phone. I gave it to them to play some games while we waited for the movie to start. The cashier seemed to be on her side, despite definitely seeing me pay for the tickets. I assume she's just friends with the entitled mother. I'm sorry sir, but I'm going to have to ask you to give her the tickets and to leave the premises. Otherwise, I'll have to call security. I thought I was sunk at this point. But just then, my two friends decided to show up with the snacks hidden in their jackets. Normally I'd chastise them for being late, but right now I was just relieved to have some backup. They walked in on this argument, and I gave them a brief summary of what just happened. The cashier still insists on me giving her the tickets, as we didn't have proof that we bought these tickets. But then one of my friends remembered something. Hey, doesn't your phone have a lock? Yes, it does. I turned back to the entitled mum with a huge grin on my face. So if that's really your phone, you'd have no problem unlocking it, right? Uh, Come on, prove it. The entitled mum grabs the phone from her children's hand and tried random combinations, hoping that something would work. She failed every time. I then grab the phone from her and unlock it in my first try. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my phone. I think it's time we go and enjoy this movie. The entitled mum and the cashier shut their mouths, not knowing what to say at this point. Me and my friends walked into the movie, trying not to laugh at the sheer ridiculousness of what just happened. Sadly, we missed the first few scenes of the film, but the rest of it was very enjoyable. I know the hero of our story didn't really know what was going on, and they were just glad that they got to go in to see the movie, but it does seem really suspicious that the cashier definitely would have known that it was their tickets. Especially if the cashier knew the mum, 
it just kind of gives you that sinking feeling in your stomach knowing that there's some people out there using their power even if it's just a little bit of power to take advantage of other people if you'd like your story to be narrated by me don't forget to visit the subreddit r slash voicey here link below don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more all right i'll see you in the next one What do we call a person who has a child and tries to take other people's stuff?